Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into polar coordinates and uh, look further into area by going over example three, which is actually just a continuation of my last video on the cow tied to a silo, uh, the grazing uh, animal, the animal grazing area problem, the the somewhat famous one. I'm gonna go over method two. So to watch method one, make sure to watch that in my last video which I used parametric equations and it was in fact very very tedious but now I'm gonna show you a different uh, way that basically uses the same method of finding uh, area of pol like in polar coordinates and so let's just go over here and I'm gonna show you it's much simpler than I did in my last video just to show you the difference so this example again is a cow is tied to a silo with radius R by a rope just long enough uh, to reach the opposite side of the silo, find the area of the available grazing by the cow. And again, just like in my earlier video, uh, what you end up having is this is a straight line. It's uh, just long enough to reach the opposite side, so the full length is just around, uh, around this uh, yeah, half circle across there. And as the cow, the only way it can move is around this path, because uh, it's always straight line like that. And this is the invalid curve right there as I showed before of the circle like that as it's flattened here you get a straight line across there etc yes so the total grazing area is going to be well if you just look at a graph like this I'll draw it over here and now in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the circle or this uh, silo yeah, this silo right here, instead of uh, putting the center of that at the center of the axis, I'm going to put it on the left end point like this. So that is our silo. And what we end up having is, is a resulting curve where the area that the cow can go to is there's an invalid like this all the way across there. Actually, I just fixed uh, how it looks like that. Put this line across. And then likewise for here. Let's see if I can make this look a bit better like that here I just fix that up so something like this where this looks like an avocado <laughs> avocado like that very interesting yeah especially when you make the axis like this so that's <laughs> pretty funny yes yeah, so thus the uh, rope is tied from one end to the other well that's the the farthest distance it can go so from the center here this full angle is pi so first of all recall the definition of a radian where you have you have this section like that if that is the angle theta and this is r this length a is just equal to r theta by definition where the uh, angle is in radians yeah so if the angle is pi like this the full length all the way across is going to be yeah, it's going to be like that Again, I've went over this before, but I just want to do this all in one complete video. So this is going to be pi, uh, and then we have, yeah, the radius, we'll call that r. So we just have pi r, where this is the radius r of the silo. Yeah, so thus what we have is, well, on the left side here, this one that's fully straightened out. Again, this is going to be pi r distance, pi r, this is pi r. So this whole side here is a half circle. Yeah, so I'll call this, this is just area one, and that is a half circle like that, where the radius is pi r. And then area two is over here, and I'll call these, I'll separate these into area two. And then we have two of these area twos, like that. And I'll just put this uh, arrow like that for both of those combined, is just area one. And this one's area two like that. Yeah, so thus what we have is total area is, I'll just write thus, we have our formula, thus area is equal to just a summation of all the areas, right? Something like that, AI, just for symbolizes the summation of all. So then we have area one plus two times area two, like that. Where area one, we can solve that, that's just half of a circle pi uh, radius uh, squared of that uh, circle where the radius is equal to, the radius is just pi r, like that. So this equals to, again, pi pi r squared. We have pi squared, and it becomes cubed, and that is just pi. That's just r squared. Well, let's put this uh, just to 
I'll just do this uh, first pi squared r squared and then simplifies to equals to um, pi yeah, pi cubed r squared over 2 like that so that's a simple one like that and now to solve for the uh, area underneath this invalid uh, curve like that that is this one right here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that separately and I'll, I'll just move the axis because it's easier to graph so I'll do that in polar like this and right here area 2 so we're going to be dealing with area 2 here so let's just draw the circle around this so just fix up the circle like that this is just the polar axis for this case now we have our curve like that our invalid goes all the way across there and then this is a straight line here tangent across that now this is our area there that we want to solve and this is just area two all the way across yeah this whole thing let's erase this for make it neater so now what we'll do is now so our angle let's just say we have at a point here now so if we have a point like this we have an angle here we'll call this theta yeah so this angle I'm just gonna first actually draw this so this is just pi but if at over here this is at at just an, a generic angle theta and at this point here we could just say that is at theta equals to zero like that now again if we recall from the definition of the radian we have this is the arc length r theta so then this arc right here is going to be well uh, yeah r times theta like that where this is the radius r yeah like that I'll just put there so now what we have is if we draw this where the line ends up going to the invalid that's going to be a straight line like that this is tangent to it 90 degrees all the way across here yeah like that this is also going to be because this is exactly this rope here but moved all the way across there so this length is just r theta and now here's the tricky part which is uh well this is the part the trick that it saves a lot of time when you compare this, this to my earlier video my last video what we'll do is we'll just shift this by an infinitely small angle yeah d theta something like this here where this angle the difference is equal to d theta or not not d uh, uh, this is going to be yes yeah, small d theta now let's say it's infinitely small so the result is well by symmetry this is going to be now uh, the angle across here this goes all the way across their tangent to this point yeah, just drew a bit better. So now that we have this angle shifted this way, this gets shifted the same, and this is just d theta. Because yeah, we're just shifting it by exactly the same angle, and again, it's infinitely small. So then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, assume that we're just going to have a little arc like that, and then when it's infinitely small, we could just use this area of a sector of a circle like that. So recall, yeah, I'll actually put that over here uh, recall from my earlier video that the area of a sector of a circle area of a sector like that of a circle is just equal to like this if this is theta this is r then what we have is the area a equals to well one half r squared theta and I'll put the proof in my earlier video uh, of this yeah, in the link below in the description. So we're using that. We're going to just say, let's say these, this area right here, infinitely small area, is equal to just one half. And now the angle d theta, like that. One half r, which is, this is the r theta, which changes. Yeah, you know, which changes as the angle changes. When you change angle small, you're going to have a small little r there. I mean, yeah, r theta will be small. Then times this by... Uh, now we have this is squared, so yeah, one half r squared theta, but now we have d theta. Like that's an infinitely small angle, uh, times it by r, yeah, whoops, times it by r theta squared, and then divide by two like that. So what we'll do now is sum that up, and we're going to sum it up from well, the angle is from uh, zero to pi. So yeah, we're going to go from here all the way across to pi, where this line right there. This is at theta equals to uh, pi. You know, just fix that up because this is supposed to be the highest point and it curves down. And again, this is at 
uh, there this is just theta equals to pi like that or, or uh, 180 degrees yeah so thus what we could do is just sum this up so area equals to well the summation from 0 to pi of the integral I mean yeah, the integral from 0 to pi of well dA this equals to 0 pi 1 half r theta squared d theta yeah so then we could just square these and take the r out because this is a constant so this equals to one half r squared integral from zero to pi of theta squared d theta this just equals to yeah this just equals to the integral now we have one half r squared and the integral of uh, theta squared is just theta cubed over well three and then this is from zero to pi so we just plug in the pi when plug in zero it just it just vanishes so we have one half and then we have r squared pi cubed over three which uh, this just equals to well uh, pi cubed over yeah pi cubed over two times three is six like that r squared and again actually this is a uh, two so that's for the area a two uh, not a uh, the a is the uh, overall one yeah so this is our area two like that and now we could just sum it all up so then area is yeah the total area is equal to I'll just write thus the yeah, total area a i equals to a one again plus two a two which equals two area one which was if I remember one half pi cubed r yeah r squared let's just scroll up to see it so yeah one half pi cubed r squared like that and then plus now we have to two times uh, yeah two over six now pi yes yeah, so we have a two over six pi cubed r squared for a two yeah so that's what we have there and notice we have this uh, pi r cubed so this just equals to we could just factor those out equals to pi r uh, pi cubed r squared one half plus two over six like that common denominator is going to be six so what we'll do is times this by three uh, on the top and bottom so that doesn't change anything so what we have is going to be pi r squared and then this is just going to add up three plus two is just five so we have five over six write that a bit neater so the total area is equal to 5 over 6 uh, pi cubed r squared which is exactly as shown in my last video so yeah that is the correct one I'll just to show you from my last video here's the notes from it so notice how much more complicated the last video was here I set up the uh, parametric uh, curves or parametric equations and uh, trying to solve this so using it that kind of integral method it did a bunch of stuff going all the way down so you know it's in a bunch of trigonometry and used had to use a calculator to simplify or just to save time otherwise it took, would have taken much longer and then all the way and we get this 5 over 6 pi cubed r squared exactly the same as this right here 5 over 6 pi cubed r squared so yeah so this is much uh, simpler than the uh, earlier video. Yes, yeah, but much simpler like that. So yeah, hopefully you uh, watch. Make sure to watch both videos to see the difference. Very interesting stuff. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as on Steam. It I'll be uploading it there right after I uh, post this video. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.